All righty. Yeah, it looks like everything's working. Clearly a whole different setup going on here. If you're watching the video, I'm on AirPods and my Bob Barker mic, as Cupcake calls it. This is the dailybreadproject.com coming to you live from the River House. I'm trying to figure out this mic. I got to hold it in my hand. It's so strange. Uh, so let me bring on the guest. I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to do all of this. I'm going to bring on our guest. I'm going to bring us live on Facebook and I'm going to cross my fingers that I can accomplish all of this without breaking uh, stride. So here we go. All right. I see that my guest is here. So I'm going to let her into the, uh, the Zoom call. I'm, going to, I'm promoting you to panelists, guests. And then I'll do an intro. I'm going to bring us live to Facebook and uh, I'll do that behind the scenes work. And then we'll be ready to rock and roll. Let's see here. So we are going to the podcast factory. And if uh, everything goes well, we'll be live in just a second and we can rock into this thing. It looks like it's all working. that wildlife passing by my window not used to that in the city we don't have that the wildlife is the homeless people getting agitated <laughs> all right uh, if I, I can do this with one hand i'm sure of it and then i'll bring it live all right the daily bread project going live to facebook looks like everything's working and we'll be ready to get into this thing and I'll take notes and talk and listen and do all kinds of magical things here as the host of the Daily Bread Project. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Looks like it all worked. All right. We are coming to you live from Facebook Daily at 10 a.m. Eastern. This is the dailybreadproject.com in a world that is going nuts. There's pandemic, <laughs> pandemics and panics and people getting wild. And I wanted you guys to know that there is a little bit of light. There is some goodness. There is some positivity in the world. And we're bringing it to you here daily at 10 a.m. Eastern, thedailybreadproject.com. I have my guest today. And it looks like her mic is lit up and she's ready to rock and roll. I have Ann Hammock. How are you doing? I'm great, my friend. How are you doing? Long time no see. And uh, I yeah. love the set. Looking good, looking good. So um, Anne is an old friend, and I don't know if she launched her show yet, but if she did, it's called Break the Stake. Uh, and I'm glad to have you here. And I want to give you the, the lay of the land so that you know where we're going, and then we can jump into it. So we go with power, positivity, leadership, love, and opportunity. So, Anne, where do you draw your power from? Well, JR, you know, um, you and I have had some chats, and there's only one place that I get my power, and it's from my faith. That's the foundation, my faith in Jesus Christ. And I love that this is the Daily Bread Project, because daily bread to me is, you know, the scripture says a man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And that, that for me... It's where I build everything. And then on top of that, the power of what's in my mind and what's in my mouth. What's, what am I letting in and what am I speaking out? And when I combine those three, I feel like even in my weakness, there's strength. Because that's what, that's what the word of God says for me. So even in the midst of the crazy, in the midst of the pandemic, I can even find in my weakness a power that allows me to retrain my brain and guard my mouth. I want to hear more about that because I love that you brought that up and I've read those words before. And so unpack that a little bit. Let us know what that means. Even in my weakness, I find strength. Well, the scripture actually tells us that in our weakness, he's strong. And so, you know, I look over the last few months and I'm going to be honest, um, it's hard to really understand where other people are because I know for my husband and I, we've navigated some pretty difficult waters over 25 years. 
you know, we've lost everything. We've lost jobs. We, um, my husband went through a tra tragic divorce, was a single father. So we've known personal pandemics, if you will. And yet this is completely different. And so for us, um, it is, it's kind of revisiting those places where you've been before. And so when a pandemic, pandemic, hits our world, not our nation, but literally our world, I have to go back to other seasons of my life and think, what did I learn from that season that I can bring into this season? And so, you know, when I look at the loss of, um, you know, for us, a job, I know that I've always been provided for. So I have extreme confidence when a pandemic hits that I'm like, you know, I don't know how we'll navigate these waters, but I know how we've navigated difficult waters in the past. And on the other side of it, there's always strength and there's always better. And, you know, I know that there are people who are, are they're facing really difficult times right now and challenges that I don't necessarily understand. And yet I have a confidence that we all have the opportunity to get on the other side of it better. If you guys haven't realized, this is why I, I brought her on the show is like she's just oozing with positivity. And so let's talk about that. That is the, the, the next step here to talk about how you stay positive, what you do to stay positive and, and what it is that brings positivity to you every day. Okay, so here's what's kind of funny about this is I'm actually naturally bent toward, toward what could look like negativity. Really? I'm the girl, yes, because I'm the girl no. that walks in the room and I see the picture that's crooked. I see, you know, I see what's wrong. And I used to think that there was something wrong with me because I saw the little things that were wrong instead of the big things that were right. And so what I learned to do with that is appreciate um, it as a gift and not a curse that being able to see the little detail of what could be tweaked does not mean there's something wrong but what i have to make sure that i do is say and see all the things that are right i could still tweak the thing that i i can still walk by the picture in your house and oh just fix it for you <laughs> <laughs> but i i can't miss the moment and so in the middle of, you know, the last few months of people feeling isolated and people feeling alone and not being able to visit my parents and not being able to hug my grandchildren, you know, to say, grandmommy, granddaddy, you know, right now we're just hanging out. And those are hard things. But you know what is we can still laugh even at a distance. We can still have joy even in the middle of the journey that we're walking through. And so I think in the very beginning, I just decided to make a choice to be a voice that would find something positive in the middle of the problem. And- I, I love it. <laughs> how, how do you make that transition though? How do you make that transition? Because I. I'm with you, by the way. I, I have a, a, a terrible bend towards being negative and it's really hard sometimes to find the positive. So what do you, like, what's the decision or what is the process? How did you kind of beat down that pessimist to bring in the positivity? Yeah, I have to ask myself the question, does it really matter? Like in the long run and even for eternity, does this really matter? And when I'm able to step back, and so for me, I have to literally sometimes just take a step back and say, D does this matter enough to say something about it? Does it matter enough to fix it? If it matters, then it's worth it. But if it doesn't, then there are some things you just take in stride and make the decision. So for me, it is a discipline is a discipline of a decision that I've had to learn. I wish I would have learned it because I'm 50 years old now. 
I wish I would have learned it a long time before because I think I let things that didn't matter matter and things that should have mattered, I didn't make a priority. And today I go, okay, what really, really matters? Well, for me, I, and I'll, I'll take a, just a second and just tell you at the beginning of this year, so I turned 50, my, I'm a, became, my husband and I became empty nesters. We lost our full-time income last May. Every single thing in our world changed. And so coming into 2020, I had to step back and evaluate my life because it, I could have looked at a lot of negativity. But instead, I said, you know what? What really matters? And it was my marriage, my motherhood, and my mission or my ministry in that order. That's what mattered. And so when I reevaluated, I actually had, um, my husband and I had talked about, we need about a year sabbatical just to like re-look at our life because the next 25 years are going to look completely different than the first 25 years. And then we actually, you know, we got our sabbatical granted in a completely different way. That, <laughs> you know, sorry to the rest of the world, right? But what it did for us is it gave us an opportunity. And JR, I think that for me is what's most important as we are looking at where we are right now is we've all been given an opportunity. I don't want to miss the opportunity. I want to make the most of the opportunity. Instead of looking at it as an obstacle of what we can't do, we look at it as an opportunity of what we can do from here. Let's talk about leadership now. And I remember when I met you, it was right around the time that all that stuff hit the fan and your life was changing drastically. And so let's even go back to from then, like how has your leadership both at home with your team, with your clients, how has your leadership changed and evolved? Um, I, I don't know that I could say it has necessarily changed. Um, I think it's different in the platform that we've been given. Does that make sense? Like our, our shifting of our platform did not necessarily change the, the leadership. Um, are you losing me, JR? No, I'm here. Okay. Um, you know, we've always, my husband and I have always tried to navigate our leadership through servant mentality. Like how can we serve someone else? How can we celebrate someone else? I've always believed if I don't have the ability, capacity, or willingness to celebrate someone else, I'll never be celebrated. And so, you know, losing our, the, the job and that platform, we, we literally just shifted to how do we stay involved? See, we didn't lose our friends or we could call them clients, whatever they were. They just came with us into a new season of our life. And so our heart is still, we may not earn income as a result of that, but what we're doing at, because we brought them with us is we're still investing. We're still trying to serve their life and give them leadership and the capacity that we've been given to do that. And so for me, I'm just grateful that um, I didn't have to walk away from the relationship because that's what really matters. So we shifted platforms, but we didn't shift style, if you if you want to say it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of what I'm noticing with a, with a lot of people we've spoken to on the Daily Bread is like business as usual. Uh, yep. You know, some things might change here and there, but we're business as usual, and that's kind of what I hear you saying. It it might be in a different place, but it's still the, the business as usual. Cool. So let's talk about. Uh, and you got into this a little bit. I want to expand on it more. What opportunities are you loving right now? What are you seeing that you love right now? What's got you pumped and excited? Well, I'll tell you um, what I'm loving. And I heard you say it the other day. I, I listened to uh, you say that y'all are enjoying family dinner. You're sitting around the table. I'm telling you, I, I think I was born to be a mom. Like that from a little girl. I, all I ever wanted to do is be a wife and a mother. And so for me, 
I have delighted in watching people out, children outside, kids playing together outside, riding their bikes, families sitting around the dinner table, seeing people talk about what are they cooking, people out growing a garden. Now, I, I kind of am discovering some things about myself because my husband and I built a chicken coop. And I said, I'm kind of really? like Green Acres, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, um, so, but what I've done is I've found some things inside of myself. I've done some self-discovery and I've loved that. So I've loved watching families. I've loved watching um, a clean slate and people's schedule. Uh, you know, we've done it. We've run kids from here to there and back and forth and we've been in the car and we've, you know, run through the drive through. I love the fact that we were, uh, we were kind of in a forced pause, you know, like we, nobody made the choice necessarily to stay home. Um, but we were granted an opportunity to stay home. And I've loved seeing people take advantage of that opportunity. My heart though, is that, we make great decisions coming out of it. That there's an opportunity for us to say, I, I don't even like thinking about returning to normal because there's too many things I hope we never return to. So I, I, I still love the, the fact that we've been given an opportunity to do life differently. As Ooh, I like that line. Do life differently. That's a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i i uh i'm i'm you know what like, i have to ask i'm curious because you said you're an empty nester now but you did the whole family thing where you're running kids to all kinds of practices multiple kids to different things all day long run 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 and and the forced slowdown I mean, do you think that's viable? Do you think that's good for kids? Because we're doing it too. Obviously, we have a kid who can't go to karate and do those other things. But I'm seeing a lot of families now saying, maybe we don't need all that. What do you think? Well, I have two different opinions. I think there are uh, such value in what kids learn in sports. I know that my, my children benefited from being a part of sports. My daughter played softball, my son played football, they play, you know, all the school sports. There was value in what they learned. Um, looking back, I think I might have placed a higher priority or importance in, on those things. Like I think they can, that they can be a value but I'm not sure that I would redo the level of priority that I placed on it. So involved, yes. I'll, I'll give you a quick example. So my daughter was an incredible softball player. She started playing um, travel ball at 12 years old. And we believed, and she believed and wanted to play in college and even be an Olympic athlete. That was, that was the mission. And when my kids get on mission, mom and dad get on mission, right? And so we served that desire inside of her. Do I regret it? I have no regrets. However, when she was 18, she was called to be a missionary and did not go to college and play college softball. And so it was a complete shift. Did she learn things from it? Yes. We spent a lot of time and a lot of money that I don't regret one second, but I think she could have learned the same value without us sacrificing so much time. However, we were able to do it as a family, so we got the best of both worlds. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So. You, you, it's just uh, it's why you're a happy person as you're talking about enjoying the journey. Yeah, it worked. Sure, I can see it differently now, but we enjoyed it while we did it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. So let's talk about this. This is kind of the, the, the biggie. And so since we're coming out of this pandemic thing, I'm going to change this question just a little bit. So you're the first that's going to get it this way. Okay. You ready? <laughs> All right. When you leave this earth, how do you want to be remembered? It's a great question. 
And because I've listened to some of your other interviews, I anticipated the five-year question. <laughs> the five-year, yeah. I did. But here's what I was actually going, um, that I was thinking about. I don't think that a pandemic, a crisis, a circumstance, five years, 10 years, 50 years changes my answer. And here's why. So in, at the end of January of this year, you, you and I've talked and so, you know, I'm pretty healthy. That's kind of my focus is helping people get healthy as a result of my own journey. Um, so I would have said I'm pretty much a picture of health and take care of myself. And January the 29th of this year, um, at 8.30 at night, I told my husband, I said, something's wrong with my leg. My, my leg started falling asleep and I felt the numbness move up the right side of my body. And I said, you need to get me to a hospital. And so we hopped in the car and we headed to the hospital. And I, I had a feeling that I was having a stroke. I don't know a lot about strokes, but I could feel the numbness. I lost the use of my right leg, my right hand. I could feel it moving up into my face. And I said, I think I'm having a stroke. And at that moment, I made a decision. I picked my phone up in the car and I called my children. I wanted them to hear my voice because I thought I, if they do, I may not be able to talk. I may not be able, I might, might not be alive. What, what do I want them to hear? And I wanted them to hear my voice and I wanted them to hear me say, I love you. So I made that phone call and we pulled up into the emergency room and they came in. Long story short, they told me that I'd had a stroke. Well, three days later, I was completely restored everything in my body and complete recovery, no lasting effects from that. Thank God. But it, the point of that is when you're faced with the circumstance that you might lose your life, that the after part, I began to evaluate what would I want to be remembered? Do I have regrets? What would I wish I would have said if I wasn't still sitting here? And I can actually tell you that I didn't feel like I would have regrets. I feel like the only thing is I would want my husband to know how deeply I love him and my children to know that. And I would want people to actually say this, this hangs on the wall of my home. One portion of it says, steady and strong, not afraid, never stingy, always generous to those in needs, no, those in need. Her life of influence and honor will never be forgotten for she was full of good deeds. That's, that's what I would want is people to know me for generosity, integrity that I loved as big as I could love. That's, that's how I want beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I changed it. I'm keeping the show. So we got to get past that. So now it's a lifetime goal. <laughs> but yeah, cool. Wow. So, so much there. I've got a, a full page of notes here. So, and where can people meet up with you, find out more about you, get into your universe? Yeah. Um, so Instagram is my, my fun place right now because I love sharing some home decor things. And actually, you know, my Break the Stake um, podcast is literally on the verge. Thank yeah. you for continuing, continuing to, to encourage. Um, so on Instagram, Facebook, and then also our website for the business is changebody.com. Changebody.com. Okay. Cool, cool. All right. So, and thank you for bringing the light, leadership in good and hard times. You were amazing. I'm glad that we got to catch up. And everybody, if you got something from this interview, if you enjoyed this, if there's one little piece that resonated with you, share it. Get it out there. Bring the light to someone else who needs it because you will be their hero. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. The Daily Bread Project coming to you live at 10 a.m. Eastern.